All right, I got this nice integral to show you today. So it's the integral of the square root of tangent of x. And here we're actually finding the antiderivative. Notice that this is not a definite integral. We're gonna use two main tools here. Maybe we'll prove one of them, but the other one is kind of a standard known antiderivative. And that's this first one that says the antiderivative of one over the square root of one minus u squared is the arc sine of u or the inverse sine of u. This next one relates the antiderivative of the reciprocal of the square root of u squared minus one to this natural log object. So let's maybe derive this identity real quick. So let's bring this up here. We have the integral of du over the square root of u squared minus one. That motivates us to do a trigonometric substitution. Let's say u is equal to the secant theta. So that means du is equal to secant theta times tangent theta d theta. And then u squared minus one is equal to tangent squared theta. That's just using trigonometric identities here. So that changes this thing into, well, let's see. We've got secant theta, tangent theta, d theta in the numerator from this du term. And then in the denominator, we have the square root of tangent squared, so that's gonna be the tangent. So in the end, we need to take the antiderivative of secant theta d theta. But that has a well-known antiderivative. It's a little bit crazy, but it's well-known, and that's the natural log of the absolute value of the secant theta plus tangent theta. And then plus a constant, but I'll leave the constant off here. But notice that secant theta is equal to u, so that gives us the natural log of u plus tangent theta is the square root of u squared minus one given this identity right here. So looking at this all together, we have derived this rule. Now that we've got these taken care of, we're ready to jump into our original problem. So now we're ready to jump into the evaluation of our goal integral. And we're gonna do a bit of a trick here. We're gonna look at not only this integral, but the corresponding integral with cotangent. And let's set our original integral equal to a. So that's gonna be the integral of the square root of tangent x dx. And then b will be that corresponding integral with cotangent. So we have the square root of cotangent x dx. And now we're gonna look at both the sum and the difference of these two integrals, starting with the sum. So this is gonna be the integral of the square root of tangent plus the square root of cotangent dx. But now let's recall that tangent is sine over cosine, so this gives us the square root of sine of x over the square root of cosine of x whereas cotangent is, well, the reciprocal. So that's gonna be the square root of cosine of x over the square root of sine of x. Now from here, we'll find a common denominator to smash these two together. Notice the common denominator in this case will be the square root of sine of x times cosine of x. That means we need to multiply this one right here by the square root of sine of x over the square root of sine of x, whereas we need to multiply this one by the square root of cosine of x over the square root of cosine of x to build up those two denominators. So let's see, that'll give us the integral of square root of sine times square root of sine is sine, Square root of cosine times square root of cosine is cosine. And then in the denominator, we've got square root of cosine times sine. So let's write that down. Square root of sine of x times cos x dx. Now we'd like to write this product of sine and cosine in terms of sine plus cosine, which may seem kind of a little bit out of nowhere and difficult, but in fact, it's not too bad using the maybe most well-known trig identity, the Pythagorean trig identity. So let's notice if we take sine of x minus cosine of x and we square it, we get sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x minus two times sine of x cosine of x. 
but we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is one. That allows us to easily solve for sine times cosine in terms of sine minus cosine. So in fact, this is equal to one half and then one minus sine of x minus cosine of x quantity squared. And all of that's in the square root. Notice that we can bring this half out if we multiply by the square root of two. So let's keep that in mind as well. Okay, so let's see where that leaves us. So we have the square root of two and then the integral of sine of x times or plus cosine of x over the square root of one minus sine of x minus cosine of x quantity squared dx. But from here we can make a substitution. So let's maybe fit the substitution into this box right here. Let's say u is equal to sine of x minus cosine of x. That means du is equal to sine of x plus cosine of x dx. That means our numerator right here is our du term and then we have one minus u squared in that radical. So that gives us the square root of two times the integral of du over the square root of one minus u squared, which ends up being the square root of two times the arc sine of u by our given identity over here. But now we can plug in u equals sine of x minus cosine of x, and we've written that in terms of the original functions. So that being said, let's gather that at the top of the next board. Okay, so on our path to find this goal integral over here, we determined that a plus b is equal to the square root of two arc sine of sine of x minus cosine of x, given a and b defined as follows. Now let's look at a minus b kind of in parallel. So that'll be the antiderivative of the square root of the tangent of x minus the square root of the cotangent of x. Now, we'll do essentially the same thing that we did before, like find common denominators and stuff. Maybe I'll skip that because that's, like I said, essentially exactly the same. And I'll just jump to this is the same thing as the square root of two times the antiderivative of the sine of x minus the cosine of x over the square root of the sine of x plus the cosine of x squared minus one. Then let's include a dx there. And just as before, that motivates some sort of substitution. And you might guess that that substitution has to do with this second tool down here. So now let's let u equal sine of x plus cosine of x and we get du is equal to, let's see, minus sine of x plus cosine of x dx. But that means that this thing right here is all minus du if this thing right here is u. So we're kind of off by a sign, but that's okay. So here we get this is minus the square root of two, and then the integral of du over the square root of u squared minus one. Now we can apply this rule over here. That gives us minus root two, natural log of u plus the square root of u squared minus one. But then given that we know what u is, and we can easily calculate u squared minus one, that leaves us with the square root of two and then the natural log of sine of x plus cosine of x, and then plus the square root of two sine of x cosine of x. And some things cancel when we square u and subtract one by the Pythagorean identity. Okay, so now let's bring that value of a minus b up to the top, and then we have a fairly simple system of equations that we can use to solve for a. So this is where we left ourselves off. We had a was the integral of the square root of tangent, b was the integral of the square root of cotangent, our goal was the integral of the square root of tangent, and then we had a plus b was that thing involving the inverse sine function, a minus b involved the natural log function. Now we can put this together by maybe multiplying this equation by one half, this equation by half, and adding them, and that gives us a value for a. 
So notice that a will be the square root of two over two, but that's the same thing as one over the square root of two. And then we also have the square root of two over two here, which is again, one over the square root of two. We can bring that out front. So we have one over the square root of two, and then we'll have the arc sine of sine of x minus cosine of x. That comes from this sum term. And then minus the natural log of the sine of x plus the cosine of x plus the square root of two sine of x cosine of x. Great. And that would be a final value for a, but let's recall that a was exactly the integral in question. That's the integral of the square root of the tangent of x. And of course, maybe you'd wanna put an arbitrary constant in there as well if you wanted to kind of tie everything off, but I think we'll just leave it like that. And that's a good place to stop.